Welcome to topic 3 in unit L. Today we're going to be talking about pneumatics. But first of all, let's talk about what the word pneumatics means. First of all, the Greek root pneu, P-N-E-U, means air in Greek. So we know pneumatics is going to refer to air somehow. And indeed, the word pneumatics refers to how air and other gases behave when they're under pressure. More specifically, as you've discussed briefly in Forms 1 and 2, the particles in a gas are not very close together. So it is possible to squeeze gas particles closer together than they already are. And, and in this way we can shrink the overall size of a gas, and this is called compressing a gas. So if we look at our two figures here, starting with the figure on the left, as we add a second kilogram of weight onto this piston on top of our gas particles, we can compress the gas into a smaller volume or a smaller size, and you can notice down below that the gas particles are closer together than they were before. If we compare here and here, the gas particles on the right are much closer together than the gas particles on the left. And on the right, although the particles aren't shown, this is another example of how we can compress a gas by going from a large volume to a smaller volume. So the air particles inside of this cube, which are not shown, but we can, we can picture gas particles in here flying around, and as we move to a smaller volume, we have a, the same number of particles inside of our cube, but now you can imagine they're going to be much closer together. So, now that we understand a little bit about how we can compress a gas, we can talk about what causes gas pressure. So again here, it will be helpful if you recall the particle theory from Form 1 Science. Um, as you remember, everything in the world is made up of particles called atoms. But what makes gases unique is that their particles are spread out. And these particles are constantly flying around, colliding with one another, colliding with the walls of the container. And when the particles collide with the walls of the container, they exert a force on a certain area of that wall. You can imagine just like if you threw a football against a wall, that football would exert a force on whatever part of the wall that it came in contact with. And what do we call it when a force acts on a certain area? Think about the elephant's foot, the stiletto heel. That's right, pressure. And so this is exactly how gas pressure is caused. When the particles or atoms in a gas fly around and collide with the walls of their container, they exert a force on the walls of the container and that force is exerted on a certain area and we know that a force on an area gives a pressure and when we sum up the pressure of all of those particles that are flying around we get the overall gas pressure and we can change the gas pressure inside of a container by changing how frequently the particles collide with the walls you could imagine if the particles were colliding more frequently then we would have more forces acting on a, a given area, and thus if we summed up all of the forces acting on a given area, our pressure would be higher if the collisions were more frequent. But how, how might we change the frequency of particles colliding with the walls of a container? What do you think? Well, there's two pretty straightforward ways we can do this. One is we could change the size of a container. You can imagine if we shrink this beaker on the right, we have the same number of particles again, but now they're in a smaller area. 
and so they're going to collide with the walls a lot more frequently. Like you can imagine, if we if we were playing uh, football on a large football pitch, and we just let uh, the players run around randomly, they probably wouldn't collide with each other that often. But if we put those same football players, all 22 of the football players, inside of B1, inside of our classroom, they and we told them to run around randomly, there would be a lot more collisions. And that's the same thing that happens with gas particles. As, a, as we shrink a container, there's not enough room for them to fly around on their own anymore, and so the collisions become much more frequent. And as those collisions become more frequent, the gas pressure increases. The second way to increase the number of collisions with the walls of a container would simply be to add more particles, right? If the size of the container remained the same, let's say we have this our original beaker, but we decide to pump in more gas particles, just like what we do when we pump up the tires on our car, or we pump up a football with a hand pump, we're adding more gas particles into the same size container, and you can imagine as we add more particles, there's going to be more collisions with the walls, and the gas pressure will increase. So now, good, we're experts on gas pressure. So let's move on and talk a little bit about how we can use gas pressure in our everyday life. So how can we take advantage of gas pressure? Just like your book says, gas pressure is one of the most important ways of making machines move. And one of the major inventions in the Industrial Revolution was the steam engine, which you may have talked about in history class and things like that, but perhaps you don't understand the science behind it. So let's talk a little bit about how a steam engine works. So if we look at the figure on the left, we see that as steam enters this chamber, it, take, it goes down this path, and we know steam is hot, right? It's, it's the gas that's released when you boil water. So the steam is hot. Hot gas is more expanded. The gas particles are farther apart than a cold gas, right? Because the particles are moving faster. So the steam that comes into the chamber has a lot of pressure because the particles are moving around very quickly. So st steam then actually causes the piston to move this way as the pressure in this chamber increases. And so then down below you can see that as this piston moves out, the wheel is forced to turn because this piston is attached to the axle of the wheel. So as this piston moves out, the wheel is forced to turn. And so this is one way that we take advantage of gas pressure is we use steam to push a piston, which can turn a wheel, which can turn the rotor on a paddle boat, um, steam engines were, were widely used and were a big breakthrough in the 19th century. All right, we're going to close today's lection, uh, lecture talking about another application of gas pressure, um, specifically atmospheric pressure. But what is atmospheric pressure? Well, you may have been asking yourself when we talked about gas pressure, and we were just talking about gas particles inside of a container and how they collided with the walls. But isn't there gas all around us all the time? And, aren't, and if that gas is made up of particles, aren't those particles colliding with our bodies as well? Well, yeah, you're absolutely right. As particles in the air collide with our bodies, they exert atmospheric pressure. Gas does not have to be inside a container to exert a pressure, the air all around us is exerting a pressure all the time. And if you picture the Earth's surface, if we look at this picture on the left, if we picture a person standing down here on the Earth's surface, a pretty tall person, as he's almost as tall as the uh, barn over on the right, 
But if we picture a person standing on Earth's surface, then we have all of these gas particles above him that are all being pulled down by gravity and are exerting a pressure on this person standing on the surface of the Earth. So if you want, on the Earth's surface, you can picture it almost like we're at the bottom of a sea of air. Just like if you dive deep into the ocean, there will be a lot of water pressure. When we stand on Earth's surface, we're very deep in the sea of air, and there's a lot of air pressure or atmospheric pressure pushing down on us. Thus, when you climb a mountain or climb a hill, the, the amount of air above you is less. You're, you're now shallower in the sea of air, so there's less atmospheric pressure pushing down on you. That's why there's... That's why there's less pressure at the top of a mountain, and why mountain climbers have to bring oxygen tanks with them as they climb, because as the pressure gets less, there's less oxygen to breathe, they need to bring their own supply of oxygen, which has normal pressure. So this wraps up topic three in unit L. Let's give a quick summary of what we've talked about today. So first we define the word pneumatics, we, we, know, we now know that it means how gases behave under pressure. We talked about how gases are unique because they are compressible, unlike liquids or solids. We then talked about what exactly causes gas pressure, which we learned is caused by the collision of gas particles with the walls of a container, which exerts a force on a given area and results in gas pressure. And we can change the gas pressure by changing the frequency of collisions, which we can do by either changing the size of a container or by adding more particles to a container. Third, we talked about some of the advantages of gas pressure and how we can use it in our everyday lives. And we talked in detail about the steam engine and how steam, which is high pressure, can exert a force or can exert pressure on a piston, driving the piston to the right. When we attach it to the axle of a wheel, we can turn the wheel and thus power of a, a vehicle, such as a car or a boat. And finally, we wrapped up talking about atmospheric pressure which is we equated it to kind of like the ocean or a sea of air above us. And the deeper we are in that sea of air, the more atmospheric pressure there is. And gases do not need to be inside of a container to exert a pressure. Gas particles all around us are colliding with us every day. Thanks for tuning in for Topic 3 in Unit L. Join us next time for Unit 4. How do levers work?